you about uh, Couchbase today, which is not surprising, I suppose, because it's all about Couchbase. But not just Couchbase, we're also going to be talking about uh, using some other tools. I'm sure most of you know about Elasticsearch and Kibana, right? Show of hands, how many people have heard of Elasticsearch and Kibana? Everybody. That's awesome. That's incredible. Uh, all right. So we're going to be using uh, Elasticsearch and Kibana to do some real-time data analytics on Couchbase because they're great tools together, and uh, I love using both of, them, both of them. All right. So I'm going to skip the agenda because it's not very interesting, and we're going to start talking about why would we actually use Couchbase and Elasticsearch to do that. There are other great tools about, uh, we can use. Obviously, I don't need to explain why we would want to use Couchbase uh, to store our data because it's awesome and you've had a day and a half to actually learn about Couchbase and how awesome it is. Uh, so it, it has very fast, uh, uh, very high performance. It stores documents in JSON format, which is uh, great because Elasticsearch also stores documents in JSON format and we have very nice compatibility be between the two of them. And Elasticsearch does some stuff of which Couchbase does not, which as I'm sure you know, uh, we have full text search, we have various querying capabilities that come with Elasticsearch. Very, uh, yeah, I think it supports about 150 different languages and they keep adding more languages to the full text search ind indexer. Uh, and there's a bunch of other features which I love. Now, why would you actually use both of those together is because they complement each other really well. Because Couchbase, does storage really well, but as you all know, uh, it doesn't do searching and querying really well. It will, because the uh, Couchbase guys are, are hard at work on Nickel, but right now it doesn't actually do querying and searching so well, because so all, all you can do right now is put your data in very fast, to get it out very fast. You can't really search or analyze it in any way that's convenient and user-friendly and especially developer-friendly. On the other hand, Elasticsearch uh, does the querying part really great. But it's not a database. All right, usually when I talk about Elasticsearch and I say Elasticsearch is not a database, someone raises a hand and says, yes, it is. Here, I've used it as a database. Uh, and fair enough, you can misuse Elasticsearch as a database, and technically you can store JSON documents in it, and you can pull them out and do all that stuff. Uh, but that's not what, what Elasticsearch is built for. Elasticsearch is built for querying and analysis and various things like that. And Couchbase is built as a database from the ground up, and it does performance really well. So rather than speaking about it and waving my hands in, in the air, I'll show you a demo uh, just to illustrate the difference between a database and something that isn't a database. And then we can move on, because I don't want someone coming up to me and saying, well, you know, you showed a demo, but we can do exactly the same thing, but without Couchbase in it. We'll just use Elasticsearch for everything, right? Uh, well, you really can't. Uh, and let's take a look. Uh, hopefully everyone here is, uh, can actually read uh, JavaScript a little bit, right? Who here writes code for a living, by the way? Very few hands, uh, oddly enough. Uh, who here can actually read at least JavaScript and understand what it says? All right, good enough. That's good enough. We're, we'll go with that. All right, so it's a very simple program I have here in Node.js. It uh, simply opens connections to Couchbase and to Elasticsearch. Uh, both of which I've installed on my laptop. It's not a hugely uh, fast machine, it's just a uh, pretty old laptop. Uh, so we open a connection, we store an object, and we pull it back. That's all that Xamarin is going to do. So we have our uh, Couchbase connection, we have our Elasticsearch connection, we have our object, which uh, is just uh, some data, it's a less than a kilobyte of data. Uh, and we're going to measure how long it takes to put the document in and pull it out. My point where I'm going with this is just to demonstrate the difference between a database and not a database. So let's do this. And uh, as you can see, Couchbase works about 10, 10 times faster than Elasticsearch for retrieving just one document. Yes, you can see it. There's nothing you can see. Well, that's not good. But you would have seen it if, uh, if I had switched the, the monitor to this. All right, let's, let's rewind slightly. <laughs> And so we have our Couchbase connections and our Elasticsearch connections, all right? Uh, and we have our person object, which is the data we're going to be working with. And all we do is set the document in Couchbase and immediately retrieve it and time how long that takes. And exactly the same thing, we index the document uh, with Elasticsearch and immediately retrieve it uh, with the Elasticsearch search API and see how long that takes. 
And when I run this, and this time I'll actually see that, yes, indeed, Calgary's goes about uh, more than 10 times faster. And that kind of uh, disparity in performance, it's, uh, it's really consistent no matter what you do. So if you put in 10 documents and retrieve them, that's gonna be about the same. If you have a cluster of 20 Calgary's machines or 20 Elasticsearch machines, it's still gonna be about 10 times difference in performance. Uh, so usually at this point, someone says, you cheated, you dirty cheater. You're using search instead of get in Elasticsearch. Not many Elasticsearch experts here. Uh, well, I actually have uh, a slightly different version of the demo where I actually use get instead of uh, search in Elasticsearch. So let's take a look here. In this case, we're using Elasticsearch exactly as we would Couchbase. We're just doing Elasticsearch get by ID. Uh, and uh, how many guesses is this gonna be faster than Elasticsearch search API? Who thinks it's gonna be faster? Like three people. It is a trap. Uh, let's take a look. It is, it's slightly faster, of course, because search it takes a bit of performance, but it's not very much faster, uh, because really there's a whole lot of overhead involved in just talking to the server and retrieving and running code. And if you actually use Elasticsearch for, for, for what it's meant to be, which is searching things and you know, uh, scoring your uh, search by various values, it's gonna be pretty much slower than Couchbase any way you do. So let's go back uh, to the presentation and uh, I'll get to my actual point. So let's, let's say we'll agree that using Couchbase uh, for data storage and Elasticsearch uh, for elastic searching is a good thing. Um, and I get to a lot of clients, I work with uh, Couchbase quite a bit uh, when I uh, do different big data systems and uh, various search analytics engines. And this is a very common use case that I see uh, using Couchbase to store your data and using Elasticsearch just to make up for the uh, gap in Couchbase's ability to search things. But it's not a very interesting use case. It's not very interesting because you can probably do some of it with views, you can work around it, but there are things you can do with the combination of Elasticsearch and Couchbase which you can't do anywhere else uh, or with any other thing, which is um, using it for real-time analytics. And when I say real-time analytics, I mean actually streaming data from Couchbase to Elasticsearch in real time and using Elasticsearch to analyze it while you're also doing most of your work on Couchbase itself in the background because that's your database. You're only using Elasticsearch to uh, quickly retrieve data and run analysis on it, uh, which is something Elasticsearch is really good at. So let's switch back and this time I'll actually turn on the screen so you can actually see the demo. Um, and let's talk about how you do this, all right? Switch to this. So the way you connect Couchbase to Elasticsearch, as I'm sure at least half the room knows, is by using XDCR. You've obviously been to a bunch of uh, presentations the past day and a half, talked about XDCR a lot. Uh, and the way to do it, uh, there is a plugin for Elasticsearch which essentially implements the XDCR protocol. So as far as Couchbase is concerned, an Elasticsearch cluster is exactly the same as a Couchbase cluster. You can uh, simply create a replication from the Couchbase cluster to Elasticsearch, and it magically works. Well, not quite magically, but it works most of the time. Uh, and it works very fast, because that's what XDCR is meant to do. Anytime you get documents and uh, whenever they mutate, uh, Couchbase batches up uh, about a second's worth of data and sends it over the wire uh, in the REST protocol of XDCR. In Couchbase 3.0, it obviously works differently with uh, DCP, but uh, that's not how it works with Elasticsearch. So let's take a look at how you would set it up. This is my Couchbase cluster. It's a very sad and lonely cluster of a single machine, just my laptop. Uh, so let's look at XDCR and we'll also take a look at our Elasticsearch cluster, also a very small cluster, again my laptop. And we have our, a few indexes which will actually connect now to Couchbase. So here's the Couchbase cluster. We have our bucket called users. We're gonna be putting users in it and we're gonna be searching and index and analyzing those users in real time. All right, so imagine you have, for example, a network of sensors or some kind of uh, access control where users come through uh, and they register. Or if you're uh, a supermarket and users come through and they make purchases uh, with their loyalty card, you wanna track this data in real time. You wanna maybe analyze how many users you get per hour, how many 
uh, which location they come from, things like that. So that's going to be our basic data. We're going to be working for the next uh, few demonstrations. So we have our user documents, which are very simple uh, JSON documents like this. I didn't, uh, I'm very lazy, so I didn't actually uh, bother generating too much data for the users. They're going to be named user 0, 1, 2, through to a million. And all they have is a name, the age, a location, because I want to do some nifty graphical uh, uh, geolocation stuff, and the date. And now let's create an, uh, a cluster application to our Elasticsearch cl uh, cluster. We have, uh, I'll delete all the extra stuff. There we go, sign in, and there it's back. All right, so as you can see, we have a uh, cluster reference to the machine itself. That's the Elasticsearch cluster running uh, on the same machine. Uh, I'll delete the replication and cre we'll create a new one so you can see that it's just like a regular Couchbase uh, XDCR. So let's create a replication from this machine in the user bucket to a remote cluster, in this case Elasticsearch. We'll call it CB users. Uh, which is the index we have in Elasticsearch. I'll switch back quickly to Elasticsearch. You can see we have an index like this. And let's start the replication. Uh, in this case, we have to use XDCR protocol version 1. That's the REST protocol, because that's what the plugin implements. And we can quickly set this up. The replication is going to start. Uh, and I already had preloaded a few users into my uh, bucket, so we can see that in a moment, we'll actually have those users in Elasticsearch as well. Well, should we already be there? Let's take a look. In our CB users, there we go. We do have a bunch of uh, documents in Elasticsearch named user one, user two, and so on. All right, so the first question should be is, how, how fast is this, All right? So I'm, I've got a bunch of data coming into Couchbase. I may be using 20, 30K operations per second to write users because I have a huge network of sensors and uh, data is coming in very fast. Uh, so how fast is it going to be from the moment you change something in Couchbase until you can actually do something useful with it in Elasticsearch? So let's take a look. A second very simple demo works just like the first one. We have a Couchbase connection and an Elasticsearch connection. We generate some kind of random value and insert it into Couchbase and then start polling from Elasticsearch and measure the time how long it takes until we can actually see the value. All right, so as you can see, we just generate a random number, we insert it into Couchbase, and then we repeatedly pull Elasticsearch for that precise term. Okay, let's take a look how long it's going to take, and it's going to take just uh, over half a second. So it's not bad, uh, and it's pretty consistent. If I run this a few more times, we get somewhere between half a second and a second. Uh, there we go. So. The reason it's up to a second is because uh, XDCR does some batching and it sends uh, documents uh, changes over in batches, not every change uh, every second. So this is pretty real time. And now the question is, okay, good, we have a real time replication. What can we do with it that's interesting? So let's take a look at a few examples. I'll generate some of our uh, pretend users. Uh, like I said, let's say we have a sensor network deployed here around this hotel. So we're going to generate some users uh, with local coordinates uh, around two blocks around the hotel. This is uh, pretty much here. There we go. We have 100 users. And now let's do something interesting with Elasticsearch that lets us get those users and find something interesting about them. OK, so first of all, let's say we want to find all the users within 200 meters of right here, of this exact spot. It's very simple. Uh, let's just run the uh, geofilter query on Elasticsearch. And as you can see, we're on a geodistance filter uh, with 200 meters at the, as the parameter and the coordinates of the hotel. And we'll find that there are 51 of those 100 users that are within 200 meters of this room. So that's nice. Uh, we can do all kinds of interesting tricks as well. Let's take a look at, uh, for example, we can define statistics on those users. Let's say we want to aggregate users by age. We want to find uh, the mean and average age of the users we see in our database. So we'll run an aggregation and see that there are 100 users and the uh, average age is 37 point something. All right, so you can use all, the, all of the power of Elasticsearch to analyze your Couchbase data. And this, is going, this can be going on in real time and you can be streaming data in, into Couchbase all the time. And it has 
uh, it has very little delay uh, and from the moment you change something in Couchbase until you can actually do something interesting with it in Elasticsearch. So for example, if you want to uh, map our users uh, by location, we can count how many users are in a grid around it. How many people know uh, Elasticsearch enough to actually uh, understand what I'm doing? Like how many people know how geofilter queries work and stuff like that? All right, I have, I have the answer. All right, so you can do stuff like uh, using uh, geohash grids and where you take a bunch of objects and you map them on a grid and aggregate how many users are in each cell in the grid. So this is very interesting, but uh, the, there are a few problems with it. And who can tell me what's the problem with using this as an, an anal analysis tool for real-time data? I'm seriously asking, so I want you to actually answer. <laughs> uh, you know what? All right, so those are two problems I didn't actually think about. I'm, I'm actually leading uh, towards another one, but that's the problem with asking leading questions in a room full of smart people. Someone will actually answer something you didn't expect. Uh, what I'm going for is it's not actually a tool. You cannot uh, go to an analyst in your organization and say, all right, there you go, analysis tools, work with it. Uh, it's not actually something that's useful to anyone except developers. And you have to build a whole infrastructure on this to create some kind of uh, tooling or to you know, maybe write some kind of console that shows this output in real time. Uh, to whoever said it's slow, it's not actually slow. It's, uh, it's very fast. I can, uh, in tests, we've gone up to about 20, uh, sorry, 200,000 operations on Couchbase, write operations on Couchbase. And with a good enough setup in production, you can get all of that over from into Elasticsearch and query this almost in real time with about one or two seconds delay from the uh, data, which is close enough for me. Uh, so it's not actually slow. It's, uh, it has very good performance, but uh, my main problem with it, it's not actually a tool. It's not very useful uh, for analyzing data. So what can we do to make it useful? All right, how many people know uh, about Kibana? Quite a few people. Excellent, so what does Kibana do? Kibana just lets us uh, run interactive queries on Elasticsearch, which is perfect in this case, because we want a tool to let us run interactive queries on Elasticsearch. So let's, uh, let's take a look at Kibana and configure something that's going to make it uh, more interesting in this case. All right. So in our, in our setup, we're going to use uh, a continuous stream of users coming into my Couchbase server. And I'm going to build a console, a dashboard in Kibana that lets me actually see data about these users in real time. We'll want to see some kind of, uh, maybe map them on a map and show where the users are, uh, some kind of uh, statistics of how many users we can see per minute, uh, maybe some other interesting things like breakdowns by age. And uh, we want to see this in real time. And for that, we're going to be using just my laptop. But in production, you probably would use something like uh, a bigger Couchbase cluster and a small Elasticsearch cluster because in this case, you're not actually storing the data in Elasticsearch. The way it works uh, in Elasticsearch, you map the document, table, uh, the document itself to uh, what exactly you want to map and store in Elasticsearch. So in Couchbase, we have huge documents with maybe 10, 20 kilobytes of data. When you move those over to Elasticsearch, you don't store the, the whole 20 kilobytes of data. You just pluck which columns or which data you want to store and index and you only map those and index those fields, and then you can run your queries on that, which means you don't need as big a cluster of Elasticsearch as you do as Couchbase. Normally, when we set this up uh, for a client, we usually have a two to one or three to one ratio of Couchbase cluster uh, nodes to Elasticsearch nodes. And this is good enough unless you have a very high write uh, load, in which case you probably need to adjust it. But most of the load actually falls on Couchbase because uh, you're reading and writing from that all the time. All right, so to connect this to Kibana, we only have to set it up, and Kibana is a very simple uh, uh, client-side tool, and uh, it's only going to talk to Elasticsearch, because Elasticsearch will do all the data preparation and analysis for us. So let's go to the next demo. There we go. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm going to prepare uh, a little code to run in the background. We're going to be inserting a bunch of the users into the database all the time. 
Uh, you can see here I'm just running, uh, sorry, in this one, I'm just running uh, a, um, infinite loop, which takes uh, up to 20 users every second, pushes them into Couchbase, and keeps randomly uh, moving them around. So it's the same uh, 10,000 users, which I move around on the map on, uh, all the time, change some stuff about them, and we'll be uh, looking at those results in real time in Kibana in just a moment. So to create the mapping from uh, Couchbase to Elasticsearch, we have to do some work to help Elasticsearch understand our data. Uh, and in this case, we're actually mapping uh, the fields we're interested in for Elasticsearch. So uh, those who don't know how it works, in Elasticsearch, you provide just a JSON template which tells Elasticsearch what fields to expect and uh, how to map them and how to treat them. For example, uh, location fields, you need to treat them as a latitude and longitude and uh, uh, how you can analyze strings and stuff like that. Uh, in our case, we don't want to do anything crazy. We're just storing the data as it comes in because we'll be uh, moving this out. But you can do all kinds of mappings in Elasticsearch. Uh, for example, you can uh, specify by uh, wildcards that any string that starts with A will analyze it as a lowercase word, and any field that starts with D and is a number, we're not even going to store it because we don't want, don't want those. And you can specify very, uh, very complicated mappings for every document. In our case, we're just uh, storing the age as a uh, long and uh, the date and the location as a geo point because we're going to be using the location to map them on a map. All right, so I'm going to run this. Uh, it's running in the background. And uh, let's see that it actually does something in, in, uh, in Elasticsearch. And indeed, we're getting more users. As you can see, uh, whenever I update this, uh, we get more users. So let's open up Kibana. Now, Kibana is a very simple tool. Uh, it's fully client-side, it's uh, built in JavaScript. And this is Kibana 3, uh, and it just happened that yesterday, Kibana released a better version of Kibana 4, so uh, the talk is already out of date. Uh, but with Kibana 3, you can do some really nifty stuff. Uh, let's open up just a blank dashboard and uh, play around with it, and then we'll uh, build a better and more impressive dashboard, which will actually analyze our users. All right. There we go. Sorry, like this. So if we start with one of the default uh, dashboards, it already reads our data, and as you can see, it actually brought back all the documents which we pushed from Couchbase to Elasticsearch. So it's showing us some statistics. It's pretty much guessing what we want to see, uh, and it's not very interesting, but it's showing us the breakdown of uh, the document types and how many documents we have, and we can refresh it a few times and see that uh, we're getting more and more Couchbase documents uh, in the database. But we're not interested in the documents themselves. We are interested in the contents of the documents. So let's uh, change it around a little bit. First, we're going to configure which Elasticsearch index we're going to be looking at. Uh, in our case, we want the uh, CB users index. We want to preload fields so it, knows, so it actually knows what fields we have. So as soon as we do that, do that uh, we can see that the console changes. We only have Couchbase documents right now. Uh, and that's still not very useful, but we can now actually build widgets which will show us the internal fields of those Couchbase documents. So let's change this uh, and get a table for breakdown of users by age, which is very simple. We're just going to pick the field. In our document, we have only five fields, so we'll just pick age. And there we go. We have a breakdown of users by age. It's uh, a little too many. Let's uh, have fewer of them here. We'll show up to five users, five different uh, top users by age. There we go, that's the top uh, five ages of users in our database, and all the rest are uh, most of them. Okay, and let's say we want to see the last 10 users that, were, that came in, so we'll just change this, con uh, this panel to show us the user names. We'll pick document name, we'll show the last users, and there we go. We have the last 10 users here uh, that we, we changed. Uh, and we can do other things, like, for example, let's clear some space here. Let's add a widget which will show us users on the map. Because, as I said earlier, we're generating users with coordinates. Uh, they're 
pretty much around the hotel here. So let's add a new widget to our console, uh, which will show us uh, location the data on the map. We want to use uh, locations, and the field is going to be doc.location. That's the field. Uh, we can even give it a tooltip. Let's uh, say username, save, and we immediately get a breakdown of all the users uh, here in, the, in this area. We can actually zoom in and look at uh, where all the users are. We're actually right about here. So now you can actually start doing this. And uh, the interesting part is you can now turn on uh, refresh and see the users change in real time. So let's do that. Let's uh, filter it to show just the last five minutes of data, which changed in the last five minutes. Um, huh. Right, so let's change the timestamp to dog dot. Uh, Save. All right, let's configure this. There we go. Okay. And rather than bore you with this, I'm actually going to uh, load my prepared console. And which is nicely configured and has all the users and everything set up. So let's take a look now. And as you can see, we've had the, I've had the demo running in the background for several minutes. So now we can actually see some interesting data about our users, which we saw or rather generated over the past five minutes. So we have a console a widget for showing users by age. As you can see, we have a map, and it's updating in real time or close to real time every five seconds, and showing us clusters of users where all the users are around the hotel and showing us the last uh, seven users that, that it saw. And we can see a histogram of uh, the number of hits on our uh, imaginary sensor network in the last uh, every minute or so. Uh, we can also add some more widgets here. For example, if we have uh, um, something we can track percentage-wise, we can show the number of uh, the change in the number of detections per minute. So we can uh, see the ticker of a number of users per second going up or down. Uh, and in this case, it's actually very useful because one of our clients, for example, which use preci this precise setup is an advertising firm. Uh, it's a company that makes um, toolbars, basically, browser toolbars. Uh, I don't actually approve of what they do, but uh, they paid us, so we went and uh, built a system for them to track it in real time. Uh, and what, essentially what they wanted was they have a country database already. They're using it to serve ads in, through the toolbars. And what they want to know is how many ads they're serving, how many users are looking at their ads in real time. So essentially their manager can sit in his office with a console in front of his eyes and see if, they're, if the user count is going up or down, or if the ad, ad revenue is going up or down. And that's pretty much what he got. Uh, he has a ticker with a number of uh, clicks on his uh, toolbar. That uh, shows the percentage of clicks going up or down. He has a real-time Instagram of uh, his uh, toolbar accounts. And uh, they were very satisfied with that, because that's pretty much uh, the entire tool they needed in this case. But uh, we can do a lot more with this. Uh, this is just a small, small sample of what we can do with Kibana. Uh, I can play around with it a bit later, uh, because it has very powerful uh, timeline and slicing controls. So this right now shows us uh, real-time data, uh, the past uh, five minutes. But with just a few clicks, we can turn this from a real-time analysis tool to an historical analysis tool. Let's say instead of looking at every f uh, at five minutes back, we can look at one week back. Uh, obviously, we want to have data for one week back. Uh, but if we did, we could suddenly start looking at trends in, uh, in our data. So imagine if instead of users, this would actually be uh, purchase patterns in our uh, shopping cart system or something uh, that can be tracked as a pattern and compared. We can get a breakdown of uh, per month, per year, and so on. We can open two consoles and compare uh, trends by weekday or so, and so on. So suddenly, instead of getting a real-time data stream and looking at it in real time, we can actually get a uh, very powerful analytic tools tool uh, to look at historical data, as long as you have all this data from the past indexed in Couchbase. Uh, you don't even need to keep it in Elasticsearch. Uh, if you don't need a real-time tool, you can just delete your replication from XDCR, and you can turn it on once a month every time you want and uh, push all your data to Elasticsearch, 
which will do the analysis and you can turn off the XDCR. With CacheBase 3.0, you can actually pause the XDCR when you, when you don't need it, which is very nifty. Uh, and then you can just get your index data in Elasticsearch and do whatever analysis you want on that. Now, this isn't really one of the, it's really not a BI tool, all right? You need to be, uh, you need to be clear that this is not a competitor for, let's say, uh, Sysense or Pentaho and one of those uh, very impressive visualization and VI tools. But this satisfies, uh, I'd say, maybe half uh, the requirements of uh, customers that come to us to build them a BI system because they don't really need a very complicated BI system. They want something they can do quickly, very easily with their existing tools, give it to an anal analysis uh, or a team or to an analyst, and uh, just have them work on this really quickly. You can take anyone and uh, teach them in about two hours how to use Kibana and how to get uh, very nice uh, breakdowns and analysis uh, just from the dashboard. And uh, the fact that we have Couchbase running in the background uh, or as a backend for data gives us very powerful options for uh, just storing the data separately from the analysis tool. Um, the reason, by the way, we're using Couchbase, well, besides the fact that we're here at Couchbase Connect, uh, you, you could ask, for example, why not use Cassandra or MongoDB? Why, why can't you not use a SQL Server for that matter? Um, the reason is there isn't any database that I know of which has something similar to XDCR. Uh, because while Elasticsearch can use pretty much anything in the world as a data source, Elasticsearch uses it uh, with uh, pool methods. It has a plugin called River and several other plugins which essentially go to a data source, bring your data in, analyze it, and uh, do it every so-and-so uh, minutes or so-and-so hours. Uh, you cannot possibly do that uh, and expect it to be really real time. You can't just uh, go to your source every two seconds and pull all the new data in. It doesn't work. We tried it. We tried doing that the same thing with different databases. Uh, but because Couchbase has, Elast uh, has XDCR and this ability to push data changes over to Elasticsearch, it lets us build this very near real-time system. All right. So uh, we can play around with it a little bit more. Uh, I'll turn it back to one uh, to every five minutes so it actually runs in the background. Uh, and uh, we can see that if I go back to, sorry, back to Couchbase, uh, I can just delete XDCR anytime I want. And uh, it doesn't affect my database or my actual application that stores data in any way. It's still going on. It's still running in the background. There's just no XDCR going on, so it's not being replicated. But the data is being stored. If I want to uh, put it back, all I have to do is recreate the replication, and uh, we'll actually start seeing new data coming in. OK, so right now, the Kibana console is frozen because, uh, sorry, this one. Uh, it's frozen because no data is coming in. But let's uh, restore the replication. It's version one. We'll give it a, se a second to restart. And then we should see uh, data resume. And there we go. Uh, we got all the delta of the data we had while that changed while there was no application running. And now we're back and uh, we're seeing the data coming in. We didn't lose anything. We didn't lose any of the uh, analysis. Uh, and in fact, we could save uh, time and performance this way. All right. So there are quite a few panels we can use. And in Kibana 4, they're actually rebuilding the whole thing from scratch. They're going to have even niftier widgets which, uh, which you can use. Uh, but this already gives us a pretty, uh, pretty good platform for building, uh, I wouldn't say very simple, but simple to medium difficulty uh, analysis tools. All right. I'm actually going to turn it off because I don't want it running in the background when I close my laptop. OK. So. Just to sum up, uh, the whole idea here, uh, besides showing how awesome Couchbase is, uh, is that we want a tool that, le that doesn't require developers or a whole uh, uh, database DBA team to operate. We want a tool that you can quickly set it up uh, with your existing uh, Couchbase installation, set it up once and leave it to run, and then you can take anyone who is not a, data, uh, not a developer, who is, is a data analyst, and he doesn't have to know how to work with Elasticsearch, doesn't have to know how to write code. 
he just has to know how to create widgets uh, with Kibana, and then they can uh, create pretty much uh, any kind of analysis they want with their existing tools. All right, so any questions? Or did I bore everybody to death? No questions? Oh, there we go. Yeah. Sorry. It will, you will get, you know, the question was, uh, if you delete XDCR, are you, uh, am I sure that I'll get all the data back, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely, because XDCR actually resyncs the entire database uh, to, the, to the cluster. That's how it works in Couchbase. And it's no different with Elasticsearch, because Elasticsearch implements the, the same protocol. So uh, essentially, Couchbase rolls back to the last known point uh, it had and resyncs all the documents from there on into Elasticsearch. Uh, with 3.0, you can actually pause it, and it will work even uh, faster, but with uh, 2.5 and lower, it will just push all the documents in, uh, whether you had them there or not. But yeah, you, can, you, you can't lose data. And again, that's the, that's the nice part. You can set up uh, Elasticsearch as a non-critical system, uh, which can just work on a small server somewhere on the side. It doesn't need to be very performant.